Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all staying safe out there during this self-quarantine, social distancing, the whole thing. Just stay safe guys, be productive when you can, and try not to let it beat you up too much. Today, what I wanted to do is go over some of the photos that you guys sent in. As we talked about in one of my last videos, I had a bunch of people send me in photos of their cars to edit and basically show you guys how I would edit my photos or your photos for Instagram. First, I wanna start with a couple tips though. Some things to look out for and to do before you even go and take your photo and then go to editing. First tip is going to be to start shooting in portrait mode. So most of the pictures, actually all of the pictures I received were taken in landscape and not portrait. Why I shoot my photos mainly in portrait when it comes to Instagram is because when you shoot in portrait, you're actually giving yourself more property, more real estate on the Instagram feed. Whereas if you had shot it in landscape, the photo is going to be a lot smaller and as you're scrolling through your phone when you come up to your picture that you've posted you might see the top half of the picture underneath you and the bottom half of the picture above you whereas if you shoot portrait you're literally taking up the entire screen so when someone's scrolling through they only see your photo on their screen at one time tip number two is to and when you can shoot in raw all the photos I received were sent to me in JPEG format so I was limited on the amount of color grading and color correction I could do with these photos. Whereas if they were raw, raw gives you a much more flexible way of editing photos and you can get a lot more out of it. Whereas with JPEG, if you start playing with colors too much and you start adjusting contrast and highlights and all that, things just look grainy and don't look all that nice. And lastly, tip number three, we'll talk about exposure and lighting. Just make sure the photo you're taking, the better you can expose it while you're shooting it is gonna give you a better outcome when you go into edit. If you overexpose a photo, and then try to kind of darken it up in spots later on, it's gonna look really grainy and it's not gonna, it's just not gonna look what it could as if you had shot the photo with proper exposure from the get-go. And the same goes for the opposite. Don't underexpose your photos too much. Although I will say it's better to underexpose than it is to overexpose because you can always lift your shadows and your mid-tones and all that. Again, the better you can shoot your photo right out of the camera, properly exposed with good lighting is just gonna make a big difference. So, Let's go ahead and jump into our submissions today. I'm going to be editing four photos that were sent to me via you guys. So thank you so much for shooting them over. F30 people, where are you at, man? I got only prelude photos and we got some third gen, some fourth gen photos. So it's good stuff, but man, F30, you're getting showed out right now by the prelude community. So the first photo that we're going to take a look at was sent in by Manuel McKean. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, man, but let's take a look at his photo. As you can tell, this photo was captured in a landscape style so it's more horizontal than it is vertical which is okay but again for Instagram you'd want to get that portrait style just to maximize your landscape on the page. I love the color on your car man it was so fun to edit so what I tried not to do is really change the color of the car too much and focus more on the background and really emphasizing the car on the shot just because I love your paint code man it looks so good. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start playing with the lighting on the photo I'm gonna start by moving the high highlights up until if you look on the histogram we start pushing the highlights all the way up to the edge and then we don't want to go any further because we don't want to start losing our color and I'm doing the same with the shadows to darken up the blacks. I'm also upping the whites and dropping the blacks themselves just a little bit. Not enough so we start losing some detail in the photo but just enough to give it some contrast. Next I'm going to play with the curve a little bit and just fine tune some of those changes that we just made. Try and find what looks best just for lighting. We haven't touched anything color wise but even you can tell as I start playing with this the color of the car changes it almost has a pearlescent look to it if I kind of play with the lighting too much so I'm just trying to keep it a natural look while emphasizing the highlights the midtones, and the shadows now what I'm doing here is I'm just dragging the blues down a little bit just to give it a little bit more of a warm sunset feel to it I think with the car being a shade of blue I think having a nice orangey background will look better so what I'm doing now is I'm doing the color correction itself guys I'm not saying that this 
this is the best way to do it or that my way is right and yours is wrong. I'm just showing you guys how I would edit the photo to my liking. So I hope you'd like that and just take it with a grain of salt. All I'm doing here is just playing with each color between the saturation, the luminance, and the hue just to find what looks best. I find that bringing out the oranges kind of makes the whole background look a little bit better. Playing with the yellows and the greens to basically try and mold down the background a little bit so that way the car pops a bit more. And now with the greens, you can tell that it really makes a big difference with the grass and the trees in the background. I'm trying to darken up the grass a little bit and make it a little bit more amber so that way it doesn't pop quite as much and isn't the main focus. Whereas if you had really bright grass, you know, you have the car in the photo, but you might also be like, hey man, that's some really nice grass. That's not what we want. We want the subject of the photo to be the car. And now as we jump over to the blues, this is where we're gonna make changes to the car itself because the car is a hue of blue. I'm trying to do my best here to bring it out and make it look like the actual color code, but just emphasizing a lot of the detail in the paint. So as you can tell, if I move my slider, the kind of reflections change a little bit. The car becomes a little more flat looking. So I'm trying to take out a little bit of that reflection while still keeping that sunset vibe because there is some sun hitting the front of the car. When I start bringing out the pinks and whatnot, it does start to look a little bit more like a sunset and you have those colors kind of coming from the paint. I'm also gonna sharpen up the image just a little bit to kind of bring out some detail in it. And lastly, what I wanna do is actually do some selective coloring here. So I'm creating a mask around the front wheel. What I wanna do here is basically bring out a little bit more exposure from the wheel because it is a little bit dark and kind of blown out right now. So I'm just bringing up the highlights a bit, maybe bringing up the shadows, just playing with these sliders to try and find a better match. As you can tell, if I go too high on the exposure, it does make the wheel look a little funky. So just be careful with that, try and do what looks best. And we're basically gonna finalize that and do the same thing on the rear wheel. I'm pretty happy with that. I like the color of the car. I think it emphasizes the color with the background being a little bit more brown and kind of orangey. I think it looks a little bit more sunset. So now what I'm gonna do is bring this into Photoshop because honestly, I don't really know the best way to add a LUT while in Lightroom. So if you guys know a way to add a LUT in Lightroom and not have to bring it into Photoshop, let me know. I've tried adding presets and just haven't had a lot of luck with it. So what I'm gonna do here is just open up Photoshop, add my LUT, and as you can tell, it looks quite crazy. So I'm gonna drop the opacity on the LUT by quite a bit. That was 100%. And I think I'm gonna leave it right around 15% just cause I don't wanna change the color of the car too much. And I think this just looks like a nice subtly edited photo. Not a whole lot we can do here again because this was JPEG. Let's go ahead and save this and take a look at the side by side of the before and after. We've made the background a little bit more orangey. Like I said, we turned the grass down a little bit so it wasn't so prominent in the shot. The car looks nice and focused. I feel like the highlight of the picture itself is the car now. Whereas before it could have been the houses behind. There's just a whole lot going on. So Manuel, thank you so much for shooting me your photos. Really love your third gen, man. Keep that thing clean and beautiful. And let's go ahead and jump on to the next photo. This next photo is from a buddy of mine who has helped me a lot in this third gen prelude game. So big shout out to you, Mr. Cody Snipes. What a name, right? That sounds like a gamer tag, Cody Snipes. Snipers, no sniping, Cody. Cody sent me a picture of his third gen prelude, which I just wanna say, if you guys aren't following him, make sure you go give him a follow, man. He has done so much work on this prelude himself between paint, body work, engine work. He's doing something huge to the motor right now, which I won't blow up for him, but guys, just go give him a follow. You won't regret it. But let's take a look at his photo and see what we can make of it. Here is a very solid photo, nice and focused. The car itself is obviously the main focus of the entire photo. I mean, the background doesn't have a whole lot going on. It seems to be in a parking lot near a park. Really, the car is the main focus and you can't really misjudge that. Now, one thing, Cody, I would like to say is going back to lighting. Time of day is a huge thing when it comes to shooting pictures, especially of cars. Right now, it looks like this photo was taken in the middle of the day, right around high sun. So it's really over kind of blown out in some ways, just because of how harsh the sunlight is. If you had taken the same photo in the shade, you may have gotten a little more color out of it. To avoid this in total is to shoot in what we call golden hour, which is right around sunset and all 
also if you can catch it early in the morning, right around sunrise, when everything is just getting hit with some light, it really brings out a lot of the depth in the photo and the colors just look amazing. Nonetheless, Cody, I'm gonna work on this photo and do the best of it. So let's see what we can make happen with this picture. I'm gonna go to my crop section and just kind of get the car into the center of the photo. It's a little bit off center and also the tilt was a little bit off. So I'm gonna change the skew. Just make sure we have the car in the very center of the frame. That tends to look best when the image is either off to one side, if you know the rule of thirds, having it off to one side and one third of the photo or just keep it dead center is always a good go-to and tends to look good 100% of the time. Opposed to the first photo that we did, I'm actually gonna start with the color correction before we jump into the lighting, just because I feel like I wanna see what I can get from the color before I go and get the mood from the lighting that I want. Basically start the same way, mess with the reds. And as you can see, I'm really just whipping the slider around to kind of see what looks best. I don't want to go too drastic on these. So as you can see, I'm making kind of minor changes, just kind of fine tune it, find what looks best. If I bring the luminance up or down too high, we get that weird pixelation in the hood. So I chose to just kind of keep it right in the center and keep things looking natural. Next, we're going to move to the oranges. Again, I kind of want to emulate a sunset here. So I'm going to bring a little bit more of the orange up. This does change the color of the car. So I am being being conscious of that. I don't want to really change the look of his car so much as I just want to emphasize it and make it look as good as it possibly can. So you can tell if I move it too far, it kind of looks more red, looks a little bit more green. So I'm just trying to find a nice middle there. And same with the yellow because the yellow and orange is kind of creating the color of his car, which is tan. So just making small changes, trying to find what looks best to match that golden hour. I'm going to move things a little bit more towards the orange hue. For the green again, I kind of want to just drop that make the background look a little bit more orangey, just kind of emphasize the look of the car on the concrete. Now here when I start messing with the blues, you can tell how much of a difference it makes. I want to just add a hair of teal to this without adding too much blue back into the frame. Lastly, I'm going to jump up to the temp slider and just bring it over a little bit more into the yellow and the warmer side. So that way, again, we kind of emulate that sunset vibe. And now that I'm happy with my temp and tint, I'm going to go back and do the lighting for the photo. So first, I'm gonna start with the highlights, push it up until the histogram starts maxing out on one side. Same with the shadows, basically until it maxes out on the bottom end. And then I'm gonna do the same with the whites and the blacks, raising the whites just a little bit, dropping the blacks just a hair, just to kind of bring out that contrast in the photo. And then we can actually move to contrast, which will just emphasize that a little bit more. And the exposure, I'm gonna basically leave right at zero. Cody, you did a really good job actually exposing this photo, so I didn't have to drop it or raise it at all, especially to taking the photo in midday like you did. Very good exposure, A plus to you. So now again, we're gonna bring his photo into Photoshop to add a LUT on here. I'm gonna add my M31 LUT to this photo just to bring out the oranges and the teals a little bit, even though we had to kind of create our own teals here, just to give it that more sunset golden hour vibe. And I'm pretty happy with that. I think if we leave the LUT right around 25%, I think that looks good without doing too much color change to the photo. Cody, I was stoked to see this one, stoked how it came out. I hope you like like it, let's jump to the next photo. These next two photos are some of my favorites and came in from Jose Alverde. I hope again I'm pronouncing that correctly. He sent us some great photos with some nice night shots to kind of contrast what we've been working on so far, which is just shooting in the daytime. Big ups to you, Jose, for grabbing these photos. It is definitely, in my opinion, a little bit harder to capture quality shots at nighttime just because of lighting. So sometimes you have to bring your own lighting, whether that's a portable light that you have that you just bring in basically basically shine on the car to bring the car into a better exposure level. But what I love about this is he's got the nice neon sign in the background. I think this looks really good and I'm excited to see what we can do with it. We're gonna adjust the size and the skew of the photo just to make sure everything is in frame. We don't have extra stuff going on. So I was trying to get that light and that crooked sign out of the frame and just kind of bring more focus onto the car and the sign. And then I'm also gonna just adjust the skew and I'm using the pole on the sign to kind of tell me where straight up and down is so that way I get my skew correct and things just look a little bit more natural and not tilted. Now with this being shot at nighttime, I'm going to start with the lighting on the photo first instead of the color just because I want to really try and bring out the car as much as I can. Basically dropping the highlights actually to kind of underexpose a little bit of those shots and bring out the mid-tones a bit. I'm also bringing up the whites, dropping the blacks per usual. And again, I'm just keeping an eye on the histogram in the top right corner of the screen. Next, I'm going to play with the curve a little bit more just to find 
fine tune some of that lighting. I did find that I actually dropped a lot of the exposure on the shot to kind of get rid of that light that's blinding from the right side, kind of in the middle of the frame. So it was really throwing a lot of gray into the photo and I didn't really like that. So I'm trying to do my best to kind of eliminate that without underexposing the whole shot altogether. And now we get the fun part, which is gonna be playing with the colors. So we'll start with the reds. As the car is red, that's gonna be the one that we wanna really pay close attention to. We don't wanna change the car too much, but as you can tell, if I play with the luminance, it kind of loses a little bit of the reflection in the car, makes the paint look a little bit more flat, which I'm kind of going for. Just gonna kind of leave things in the orange area. I'm really looking at the sign and maybe even some of the street posts and that building that's almost glowing in the background. But I wanna bring out as much of the sign and the lights as possible, just cause I really like that fluorescent light, especially at nighttime. Here I'm actually adding a selective area over the entire car because I wanna, again, further bring out the exposure on the car and really make it pop a little bit more because at this point, I'm not sure if the photo is supposed to be of the sign or if the photo is supposed to be of the car. By doing that mask, we can basically selectively expose just the car and I'm gonna bring up the exposure a little bit, kind of play with the shadows and the highlights again, specifically for the car. All right, so let's jump into Photoshop, throw on a couple LUTs and see what they look like. The first one looked a little bit too kind of unusual for me on the photo. It didn't really line up with what we were doing or what we were going for. So I'm actually gonna pick a different one, kind of like the look of this one one here just brings out more of that nighttime vibe and I'm gonna leave that right around 20% so we don't kind of overdo it on this photo but it also does have a nice cinematic look to it. I actually really enjoyed editing this photo. There was a lot of different things going on between editing the car itself alone as well as focusing on the street sign and the fluorescent lighting. So very good job, very excellent shot Jose. And I'm actually gonna do one more of your photos because they were just so unique, so creative, such a good mindset when shooting these and trying to find street art and things that just make the car pop and look better. Being kind of more of a nighttime shot, I wanna really see what I can do with the lighting and the exposure to make sure everything looks good. I'm also gonna do what we did in the last photo and basically create a selective frame around the car. That way we can really bring out just the car. The background to me looks already really well exposed. I mean, to be honest, the background looks insane. The background looks like it was Photoshopped. Like it doesn't even look real. So that's, it's really cool. However, I do wish the car had a little more light on it, which is why I'm selectively exposing the car itself to try and bring out a little bit more detail in the car and make it, again, a little bit more of the focus of the whole shot. I don't know if you had a headlight from another car on your car, but the front wheel is just really popping. So the more I bring out the exposure, the more the front end of this car just kind of tends to pop. And then here I'm just playing with the feathering of the selective area that I've chosen around the car, just to kind of blend it a little bit better with the background. Now I'm gonna go back and play with the exposure and the lighting on the whole shot, being careful not to make too many changes to the car itself. So I'm checking to make sure that it's not too grainy in the paint from overexposing and changing the shot a little bit too much. And with the car being red, we're gonna play a lot with the reds. I'm just trying to bring out a natural hue, getting that corner light to be a little less bright and a little bit more like an orange corner light. Next, we want to jump over to our purples and our blues because the background is basically all blue and purple. So here I'm just trying to make the colors pop a bit more. I find that if I change a little bit of the car settings, I can actually get a little bit more reflection on the hood and the windshield from the the writing on the wall, which I think looks really cool. I wish there was a, I wish it was a fluorescent light actually, because a fluorescent light right on the top of the hood looks so good. Lastly, we're gonna bring this into Photoshop, find a LUT that we like. Played around with a couple here. I actually found one that I really do like on it. And I'm gonna leave the, I guess the opacity right around 10%. It's nothing crazy, but I just wanted to add a LUT on there to get a little bit more of a cinematic vibe and emphasize the car. And I'm actually really happy with this one. I definitely would throw it up on my Instagram be a straight banger. Jose, thank you so much for sending in those photos. You did an excellent job being artistic with it and capturing just great photos. So play with your lighting a little bit. Don't forget, turn that camera to portrait style to get a little bit more landscape for you. I didn't really crop any of today's photos for Instagram specifically because they weren't shot that way. And if I had cropped it for Instagram, 90% of the car would be cut off and we'd basically be looking at like the driver's door. What I left here is basically how they were sent to me and just changed the skew a little bit, but guys, if you do shoot your photos in portrait, what I always do, especially when I'm working with clients, other car enthusiasts who I've shot pictures for, when I'm all 
done editing, I export each photo in two different settings as far as size goes. First one is gonna be a four by five setting, so that way you have basically a setting that is dedicated to Instagram posts, so you're taking up more landscape on there by making it a portrait. The four by five is Instagram's recommended ratio for uploading that. And then lastly, I like to export the same photo in 16 by 9 or 9 by 16 so that way it fits better for the full screen Instagram story post so if you wanted to throw your banger up on your Instagram page you can have it there and then if you want to throw the same banger up on your story and it just uh, to me it looks great it looks like you've taken the extra step to make sure things fit in the screen properly and it's just uh, one of those little things one of those little tips that I think goes a long way so guys thank you so much for sending in these photos this was honestly a lot of fun to edit photos that I haven't taken next time we do this I'd love to see some more f30 guys get their cars sent to me so that way I can play around with some f30 BMW type photos work on the portrait style play around with that see what you like I'm not saying it's the right way guys also if you want to do it landscape and that's your style like by all means I'm just saying that you will get more page space on your Instagram feed if you shoot it in portrait so uh, take that with a grain of salt and uh, yeah guys I guess I'll kind of wrap things up here I just wanted to edit some photos for you guys I hope you like them I'm gonna send them all back to you so you guys can do what you want with them and uh, yeah, I look forward to doing this again. Guys, make sure you stay safe in this quarantine and this corona. And I don't even want to say it. I don't even want to say it. I just want it to be over. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought of the edits. Any other things I missed. Any tips that you guys do for your own Instagram feeds. Throw it down there. Let's start a conversation. Lastly, hit that subscribe button, bell notification, so you don't miss another moment of Elevated. Keep elevating. I'll see you next time, and peace out. See you.